Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Film for Fans podcast, your home for movie news, reviews, and movie fan views. That's right. This is the podcast from movie fans for movie fans. I am your host, Ryan Dunleavy, and I am joined once again by the mythical t-shirt, mythical soccer team t-shirt clad to Rob Dunham. Sure, let's go with that. We're just, yeah. We're rocking the Doctor Who Dalek soccer club because that's a real thing. Yeah. Not really. Okay. <laughs> we just watched an episode of Doctor Who today with the Daleks, so it's very appropriate. Nice. So if you, if you are a fan of the podcast, we'd love for you to be able to share the podcast. If you share the podcast, Rob will come to your wedding and sing a ballad. Uh, I did not agree to that beforehand but sure <laughs> provided you're not married already i will not sing a ballad at your wedding to your secret extra spouse all right it's we're not, off it's not gonna happen we're off and running now we're yeah it's, it's <laughs> on. okay all right we've got an awesome show for you we're gonna talk jurassic park dominion we're gonna talk about pixar bringing a bunch of new shorts out and we're gonna talk about bad movies that we actually like which may or may not be bad movies yeah there's i i had a peek at ryan's list ahead of time and one of his bad movies is a movie i consider very good so <laughs> there might be some blood on this podcast yeah yeah <laughs> and of course we will have to talk about our watch list all right let's uh let's get started and kick things off so uh one of the stories we're going to talk about today is uh, Jurassic Park Dominion, which is the new Jurassic Park movie that will be coming out, uh, recently wrapped up filming, and this will be the sixth movie in the, in the Jurassic Park series, and the interesting thing about this story was the comments from director Colin Trevorrow. I'm probably not pronouncing that I right. I think it might be Trevorrow, but I, I'm not 100% Trevorrow. Sure. Yeah, we'll go with that, Trevorrow. This is what happens when you just read names and you never hear them actually pronounced. Imagine actually doing research for a movie podcast. It's not <laughs> just the research. It's that you don't know how a guy pronounces his name. Come on now. <laughs> Gal Gadot <laughs> approves. <laughs> anyway, so he talked, one of the things he mentioned about this is that he wants this one to be a cumulative story to actually wrap up all six movies which is really interesting because one of the comments he makes about this is that the first few the first three movies were kind of episodic in their own nature and he wants this one to show that all of those movies and the two jurassic world movies were all part of a larger narrative um, and here's the quote he says uh, to me, Dominion is the culmination of one story that's been told. When you get to the end of the Jurassic Park trilogy, it may not have been clear in what the complete story of those three movies was because they were a bit more episodic in a way that they approached it. But this trilogy is not that way. It's very much serialized. It's important to me when you watch Dominion that you really feel like you're learning how much of the story that was set in these movies, the first set of movies was, and how everything that happened in those movies actually informs what ultimately is able to happen in this. So I think that's fascinating because he really, I'm now really curious to see what they're gonna do with this movie, given that he's gonna try and tie up the whole series. In theory, this is the last movie for Jurassic Park then. <laughs> that's <laughs> a good one. Yeah. <laughs> So what what are your what are your thoughts on his comments? Uh, well, first of all, as I was laughing earlier, uh, money would indicate that this will not be the last Jurassic <laughs> Park movie. Um, but uh, they've been sowing seeds uh, of this since the first of the new trilogy, with the um, guy in the control room was wearing the Jurassic Park T-shirt, and they said to him, "You know, people have died there, right?" Like, <laughs> so it's been established that this is happening in the same universe years after the original trilogy. So it's been known that like, this was all the same world. I think that's been pretty widely understood by people. Um, I think it's pretty ambitious to say you can tie it all together, but I think it's possible. I think the reason why the first 
three were the way they were was because they were all based on different books and the different books all had their own story like Michael Crichton's books all had their own story to them so that's why they felt uh, maybe disconnected because they like they literally took place on different islands they were different worlds if you want to put it that way um but I think that this has a lot of potential uh if anyone watching doesn't know um Sam Neill Jeff Goldblum and others are coming back for this movie so it's going to have a whole bunch of the people from the original trilogy and the new one Laura Dern as well I don't want to leave her out um are all going to be in this last Jurassic uh, World movie. So I think that there is some real exciting opportunity there to tie the two together. Um, ever since I heard about that casting that everybody was going to be in it, I got pretty excited because I think there's a whole lot of stuff they could do with this. Yeah, it makes it really it really does make for a, a lot of potential. I think the opportunity they have to create a fantastic movie that has a really, really good story in addition to just uh, CGI monsters that run around, scare people and kill people, I think is really, really high. And so I, I would definitely hope um, that he's able to pull it off because if he could pull it off, if he could pull this all together and create a cohesive narrative out of it, I think the potential for it to be the best movie in that series um, is really high. So I, I, am, I am more hopeful the more I hear about this movie that this is going to be fantastic. And I mean, it's a definite bonus that if you don't know one of the original ideas for a new Jurassic uh, Park themed trilogy before Jurassic World came around was to have a situation where there were half dinosaur, half human monsters using rocket packs. And no, I did not make that up. That <laughs> that was a real spec script that was around before Jurassic World came around. So just be thankful that doesn't exist and hopefully never will. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so our, our second story for today is we're gonna talk about Pixar because Pixar had a kind of a cool announcement. Um, one of the things that's, Pixar movies have been famous about since really absolutely the very beginning of Pixar uh, was their shorts. Uh, they have almost single-handedly brought back the, the art form of the short movie. And they use it as a fantastic testing ground of new ideas, new technologies, and, and new young directors. So they use it in tremendous ways. And each one of the Pixar movies always starts out with one of their fun little shorts. Um, so it was announced that Disney Plus and Pixar are releasing 10 new shorts. Um, and this was first revealed um, during the December press conference, uh, but they're called Pixar Popcorn. And it's going to include a lot of characters uh, from the movies you're familiar with. So some of the Toy Story characters and Incredibles themed stuff, um, Find Nemo themed and Coco themed ones. And so this is gonna be really, really cool. 10 of them, they're bite-sized stories. They're probably gonna be like really short actually, like a minute or two minutes. Um, but it's, it's, it's actually really cool because the Pixar manages to do a fantastic job on all of their shorts. So I think this could be a lot of fun for, uh, for Disney Plus subscribers. Yeah, I think one thing we've seen with Pixar when it comes to something they produce whether it's short or medium uh for instance they've done like the toy story of terror which was a halloween themed toy story uh like tv episode and all kinds of different uh things in between that it's always quality and done with care and with skill so i don't think there's any need to be apprehensive about the idea of there being more content i'm excited about it because i think they do a really good job and i think that um there's nearly limitless potential for the characters and worlds they've created to do new things. And that's one of the, probably the biggest things that Pixar does is to create these huge worlds where there's just all this vast untapped story potential. Um, they could probably make shorts based on the worlds they've created until the end of time. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't think 10 is going to run the barrel dry by any stretch of the imagination. I, I think they will be really quality and I'm excited to see what they come up with. 
Yeah, and it really is. The short film is really in the DNA of Pixar. Um, going back to the very founding of the company, if you've read some of the, um, the history of, of the company and of Pixar, one of the first things they produced was the, the short film starring Luxo Jr., the lamp that they, that they produced to just try and show off their, their graphics engine uh, when Steve Jobs was running it. And it really, the company really took off from there because of how well they were able to do this little animated lamp and how much character that lamp has. And you see it as, as one of the, uh, one of the features, feature branding things for their, for the brand. So I think there's no doubt that these are going to be of high quality. Yeah, it'll be fun times to uh, see that Disney plus continues to be, uh, I think a worthwhile investment. If you haven't uh, tried it, I would check it out. Even if you just do a trial or even just keep it around for a month, there's a lot of stuff on there. I would say that it's probably up there with HBO Max um, as far as the amount of quality content. I, I, I'm, I'm a little biased because I have kids and a wife who really likes Disney stuff, <laughs> but um, they're, they've also produced uh, some great Star Wars content and uh, some great Marvel content, which is starting to come out. WandaVision just started this last week. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with Disney Plus. So get, check it out. We are not paid by Disney Plus, by the way, <laughs> unfortunately. For real. <laughs> Disney, you can pay us. It's okay. Yeah, you can. We'll take it. <laughs> we're, not, we're not above taking the Disney money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our third story for t- today is, is kind of a fun one. And that is the report that Matt Damon, Matt Damon, Matt is, Damon. <laughs> is joining the, uh, the cast of Thor Love and Thunder. So he has officially entered his Australia quarantine. And this is, this is very cool because uh, if you've seen the previous Thor movie, Ragnarok, you got honestly one of the most fantastic cameos, unexpected cameos of all time with Matt Damon showing up as the Loki character on uh, on their little stage play, which is which is pretty hilarious. I got to say that was great. That was a great piece of cinema right there. Uh, but this is really cool. Now it's not known exactly how much he's going to be in the film or exactly what his role is, but he he's taken his whole family down to Australia and they have to quarantine for two weeks before they can do anything. So I would imagine that Matt Damon would not do that for just a bit part. So I'm guessing he's got some kind of decent role in it. Well, I'm hoping that Thor like recreates the play but like actually does it for real (laughs) like in honor of loki like it's actually heartfelt and meaningful and i yeah i i wonder i wonder if there's more to that character if they're gonna provide some backstory to who that person was or if he's just gonna randomly be in different scenes recreating a new version of the play that loki wrote for himself (laughs) one of the best moments of ragnarok no question. And there were a lot of good moments in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is going to be a really packed film. I mean, you have a ton of characters that are going to be in this, a ton of great stuff. You have Chris Hemsworth, of course. Uh, Natalie Portman will be back. Chris Pratt reprising his role as Star-Lord. Star-Lord, uh, man. Tessa Thompson. And Christian Bale is going to be playing the bad guy in this one. And, of course, you have YTD's Korg, which, you know, is a must-have at this point so uh yeah it really it really looks like they've got they've got a really good start on on thor love and thunder so i can't wait for that to come out yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast all right you ready to get into this the discussions rob let's do it all right so in honor of us talking about the wrapping up (laughs) wrapping up of the jurassic park their second trilogy, uh, I thought it would be interesting to go over this discussion. Um, Now, this particular discussion question was brought to us by a friend of the pod, Steve Glarum. Oh, hey, Steve. Yes. So I thought I'd give him a shout out for his suggestion. Uh, But we thought it'd be interesting to discuss which third movie in a trilogy did the best job of wrapping up the trilogy. 
So if you get that straight, which of the, we're talking about specifically the third movie in a trilogy, which one did the absolute best job of giving you a satisfying wrap up of the series? So I thought this would be fun. It could be interesting to see where we go. Rob, do you have any thoughts on the matter? Uh, I want to hear what you have to say first, because I do, but I, I want to hear ah. yours. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first one that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about is I think, for me personally, I thought the original Star Wars trilogy had a great wrap up. Um, Return of the Jedi, I thought was a really, really satisfying conclusion to the series. You got the second Death Star destroyed. You got... Leah and Han together. You had the redemption of Darth Vader. You have the full um, power of Luke, the death of the Emperor, and just the massive celebration as the as the uh, the Empire was destroyed. So I thought that one was really fulfilling, and I thought they did a great job of wrapping up the original trilogy in in a way that I thought tied everything together as best as possible. I think we can safely say the the third movie and the second and third trilogies of Star Wars was, is not on this list. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's <is> not. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Sorry, George. Sorry. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, I would I might have to go with Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Mm. Uh, just yeah. because there's there's something about that trilogy and that everything is there are all three different stories but they are all connected and i think obviously centered around one main character that's probably the impetus behind that like harrison ford does a great job as uh the character of dr jones um but the way they wrap it up on his on his last mission you know with uh all the craziness going around him with his father alongside like there there's so much to that movie that i just really appreciate and i think they do a good job of wrapping up a story that probably i mean could have been bled for more um but i think they did a good job ending it and i'm really glad they never made another indiana jones movie after <laughs> hey denial works man denial works. <laughs> it's okay <laughs> sorry yeah. shia labeouf my apologies <laughs> Please don't, don't hunt to, me down. You don't need to apologize to Shia. It's okay. <laughs> I, I think the ship has sailed. <laughs> you might go cry though, because he heard that someone like made fun of him. So I, I don't want to make him cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's that, I, yeah. that's a goal right there. Do you have any other uh thoughts on this? Yeah, it was interesting because that one was actually on my list as well. Okay. Um, I really, really enjoyed that one. Um, part of me wanted to say like rush hour three, but nah. <laughs> 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 rush hour. <laughs> Wipe yourself off, you're dead. That's from the first one though. Yeah. That's from the first one. <laughs> <laughs> there there uh, haven't been see the thing is there haven't been many <laughs> any many movie sets that stop at three. Mm -hmm. Because like usually if you get to three, there's multiples <laughs> after that. Yeah, and I, I think I think another one that came up in my head was the Born, the original Born trilogy. Mm. Um, I thought they did a pretty good job of wrapping that up. Um, I thought the ending was kind of cool because it starts out in the water, he kind of ends up in the water, and you see him escape. Um, and I thought it felt like a good ending at the time, but it never felt like okay, the story is done, and there's nothing else left to be told here. Yeah. Um, I think you, I mean, you've got to also bring up Return of the King because that was mm -hmm. uh, very critically acclaimed movie. One of the few fantasy movies that has gotten like actual recognition from like the, the Academy Awards and other things like that. It, now you could say that that was probably partly just a buildup of recognition of the movies as a whole. Um, but I think on its own, it stands out as a compelling and worthwhile adventure. Uh, the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy, by the way, that's what I'm talking about. In case you don't know that Return of the King is, <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't assume that people know what a movie is, because um, that's not being fair to everybody. Uh, but that that trilogy does a great job, and I think the 
ability they had especially with the special editions to just basically make as long a movie as they wanted to helps with that because by the end you've watched almost 10 hours of a story and you can pretty much hit almost anything in a story um what's the funny part about that though is that there's like thousands of pages from the books that are, are not even mentioned in that because of the ridiculous amount of work that uh tolkien put into his books and his uh study and his creation yeah it's crazy um, how much he yeah watched. but i thought that did a great job of wrapping up uh that story satisfactorily much yeah. better than the, much better than the hobbit yeah did. and i think if we're gonna go on the reverse end one of the most disappointing was probably the matrix three mm. uh, it had some very good moments to it but i think it was just felt like such a different movie from the first two and you were out of the matrix for so much of that movie that it just it left a lot to be desired yeah it's like the not matrix three yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i'm not a big fan of the whole godfather movies um have you seen them i actually have to uh look really stupid and say i haven't seen them People yeah are... they're just yeah so i've seen them once but it's been a long time. And so I don't know how, I don't know how well acclaimed the Godfather part three is. I feel like it's not that well acclaimed. I feel like two is, is one and two are more acclaimed. Yeah. I think the general consensus is that three is the weakest of the three movies. Yeah. So it's really hard to do. It's really hard to do a trilogy and end on a high note. It really is. It's difficult. So if you, the audience have any suggestions for, third movies and trilogies that did a great job of wrapping up the series let us know we'd love to hear from you on that send us a comment or uh or an email on the website so looking from shouts for the uh disney direct to video like lion king 3 and little mermaid <laughs> 3 out there home alone 3. again again we're not paid by disney but you can pay us <laughs> we won't our, be sad so our <laughs> second discussion will be a fun one too. And Rob, last week you were talking about watching jujitsu and how much fun you had watching a bad movie to remind yourself that bad movies do in fact exist. Yes, they are real. Nicholas Cage is hiding around the corner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I thought we could go over some of our favorite bad movies. Some of our favorite bad movies, and I've got a bunch, and I, I included three on the list for Rob, and maybe I'll maybe I'll toss in maybe I'll toss in one or two more. Uh, but Rob, what are your favorite bad movies? Well, I tend to like uh, comedy, and I like comedy that's dumb and objectively not good movie making because I just like to laugh at stupid things I can quote over and over again. Uh, so a couple movies that fit that bill for me are The Stupids starring Tom Arnold. Oh, yes. If you have never seen The Stupids, you must stop everything immediately and go watch it because it's awful and terrible and will melt your brain, but you'll laugh like a maniac. Uh, and me and my fr best friend Ben from Maine used to just quote each other back and forth all the time about this stupid movie. <laughs> and when a movie starts out with a guy going out to his front sidewalk, and he's got a to-do pad. And it says, to-do, make square. So he makes a square. To-do, write check mark. So he writes a check mark. And then to-do, say, that doesn't make any sense, but whatever. <laughs> and he looks at the pad and says, well, that doesn't make any sense, but whatever, and closes it. You know you're in for a wild ride. <laughs> and then seconds later, when he uh, states that his grand conspiracy for the world is that somebody is stealing their trash. <laughs> it only gets better and better from there <laughs> and the fact that the bad guy is christopher lee is just amazing uh return to sender the sender who is stealing everyone's mail played by christopher lee as this evil nefarious entity who works at the post office and steals everyone's mail it's amazing yeah um, <laughs> uh that and another one that falls into that category for me is a movie called the bench warmers mm, um yes uh john heater the person who played napoleon dynamite is one of the people in this rob schneider and uh uh david spade as well 
and it's just it's a bad movie but it is hilarious and their one uh bro- one of the characters brothers is an agoraphobe and <laughs> he's scared to be outside and he can't stand the sun and he just shows up at this rally and just takes over the microphone and he goes i used to be afraid I used to hide in the dark, but I'm here to tell you the sun is not a monster. It's not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just stupid stuff like that. that like, it's my life breath. I live for it. Is that the one where the one dude pretends that he's Moby? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty it? sure that is. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And me and me and me and uh, me and my brothers. I, I it might be a, a casualty of having so many brothers in the family that we watch these movies and just endlessly repeat them to each other and sometimes have conversations that are entirely movie quotes but hey that's how it is yeah (laughs) how about you my first one is battlefield earth (laughs) battlefield earth i think for a while it was one of rotten tomatoes worst reviewed movies of all time Uh, it's usually on the list uh this is a movie starring John Travolta based on an L. Ron Hubbard novel, which of course, L. Ron Hubbard, famous for inventing Scientology, which, you know, if that tells you anything. So this is his sci-fi trilogy and John Travolta wanted to make this movie for years and years and years and years. And he finally made it and it is not a good movie. (laughs) It is not a good movie, but it is, it is kind of like bad sci-fi that's awesome it's well it's like it's like supposed to be a lot of the backstory or origin story of scientology yeah and a lot of people when it came out had no idea what scientology was so when they saw this thing they're just like none of this makes any sense what is happening and in reality like a lot of it was you know this is where we believe uh the world came from yeah and like I think that if people had known that going into the movie, it probably would have been reviewed even worse <laughs> than it already was. <laughs> yeah. But there was something about it that I just find fascinating. It just is. Like, this was actually one of the, I remember, I remember the first time I got a DVD player. This was actually one of the first DVDs that I purchased. I think that was in part because of the timing of it, but it was just one of those things where I saw it and this was actually supposed to be the first of two parts because it was supposed to be like at least a two part series and they never made the second one. Yeah. Obviously. Unfortunately. What what have we lost? Yes. <laughs> what, it, what the, how different would the world be right now if we had gotten the second Battlefield Earth? Yes. <laughs> Battlefield Space maybe. Let's kick it up a notch. <laughs> So um, I'll, I'll throw out another one. I think this is the one you're going to throw out some objections about there being a bad Probably. movie involved here. Uh, but <laughs> the second one is Lady in the Water. Ah! <laughs> I, uh, object. I object. I object, Your Honor. This, of course, was the M. Night Shyamalan movie. That was his fourth movie. I think fourth or was it fifth? Uh, Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense. Unbreakable. Uh, uh, Nine. The village. Shines. Yeah, the, the I think this would be five. Fifth. Yeah. 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 The fifth M. Night Shyamalan movie. Um, the one where it's basically it's based off of a fairy tale that he actually wrote for his kids. And I I really enjoy the movie. I think it's fun and I think it's interesting. The critics hated it, hated it, hated it, hated it. Um, it was on one of, you know, they do the Razzies every year where like the worst movies of the year, and this was on there. Um, it does, I will admit, like, it does have some things that are just quite ridiculous. Like the, the dude who only lifts with one of his arms. And so he's got one giant arm and then one like noodle arm. Uh, that's, that's a little, a little crazy, but I think it's interesting. I think it's a good movie. I enjoy watching it. Um, it's one that I own and I enjoy watching Lady in the Water. So I'm going against the critics. So I say that this is a bad movie simply because the critics all absolutely have hated it. And it never really got, unlike Unbreakable, which wasn't liked at first and then grew in fame later, this one just really hasn't. 
Yeah, the critics are stupid heads, and they <laughs> they, uh, they can all take get punched in the face about this. Uh, because I think that I think the reason why this was not viewed as well as some of the other stuff was because they weren't looking at they weren't looking at the movie the way it was intended to be looked at. Which I think the movie is entirely supposed to be a fairy tale. I don't think yeah. any part of it is supposed to be taken seriously, and to the uh, maybe the shortcoming is that it's set in like an actual motel in Philadelphia. So they were like, Oh, well, this is too gritty and realistic to be the setting of a fairy tale. I don't know. Um, but like the, the Jack dude with the one arm, he's the Jack dude with the one arm because the prophecy said he was going to be the Jack dude with the one arm. Like <laughs> it just, it matches the narrative of the story. And yeah. the thing I like the most about it is that, like you said, literally, he made a movie out of a story he made up for his kids, which is like the coolest thing ever, in my opinion. I think it's awesome. Uh, I mean, lady in the like, there's a lady in the swimming pool, and like, I, I don't think that happens in real life. So, like, let's just go ahead and suspend disbelief and enjoy the movie for what it is. And in general, I think that's a problem with a lot of critics that they they go into a certain movie holding it to a standard that it's not meant to be held to or looked at yeah. um, through that lens. To which so, the director is, the, is never intending. It to yeah. Be. Yeah. And uh, so I, I guess that he started to take a little bit of criticism and flack there and went downward quickly with the Avatar movie that does not exist also, uh, talking about movies that were never made, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. Uh, neither was Avatar. Um, but I, I don't think it's fair to, to put this. This is nowhere near. Uh, um, oh, gosh, what's that terrible horror movie he made afterwards? The happening? About the, yeah, this is nowhere near the happening levels of bad. <laughs> and people act like it's this awful movie. I don't I don't get it. Uh, sometimes I think critics need to like go outside and take a breath of air and like live like a normal human being. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that you don't think it's a bad movie. Like, like full stop, because I yeah. don't, I don't see that at all. Yeah. Um, one more for me that I would put on this list and I was thinking, could it be argued that it's a good movie, but I really don't think it can, uh, would be the first triple X starring Vin mm -hmm. Diesel. I'm, oh yes i like that movie yes like i don't think that's a good movie but i think that's a really fun movie <laughs> it is like to start out with uh ramstein in the castle with fire going everywhere and just screaming in german like and then there's motorcycles and people flying off of bridges and jumping out of planes and i don't even remember everything that happens in that movie because it's like one non the movie is one non-stop action sequence essentially yeah. Uh, people are getting shot people are getting double crossed like it, it's a it's a movie that the story is never done like it just keeps on going and going and something new happening every second of the movie um so i don't think narratively it could be considered good but i think it's awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, now, i think it's to fun the, to watch. if you go to the second triple x that is just a bad movie yeah <laughs> it's a terrible movie but yeah no that one i agree with you I agree with you. You cannot say objectively that it's a good movie, but it's a lot of fun. And it's it it definitely hits all the action, all the action movie points and has some I think a lot of action I, I think out of any subgenre of movies, probably action movies are most likely to fall into this category of that that and like childish comedy, like I mentioned earlier. I think those are the two main areas. Um, another one would be horror if you're a big horror movie, but I'm not. Uh, a huge horror movie person my brother is i know that he has several movies in that genre that would fit this list for sure yeah yeah and so uh i will conclude with one uh for me that i have to admit i do i do like it even though it is you know the whole series is not not particularly great but uh and that's twilight i just i like the movie i do for whatever reason, I do. One of the one of the backdrops on this, which I think is true of the entire series, is they picked fantastic music. The bands they have playing in the in the soundtrack and the background of the songs in these movies are fantastic. Really, really good stuff on the soundtracks. I don't know. I think it's just like the movies came out during during a fun period of time, 
for me. And I think I just have nostalgic memories about them. So uh, that's the only thing I could chalk up to say I, why I like it. I know that I know that Death Cab is on the soundtrack of one of these, at least one of these movies. Um, but I don't know that from watching the movies because I've never actually, you know, manned up and watched them <laughs> because yeah, I've just I've just heard so much bad about them and Death seen Cab. some clips of them, and I'm just like. I'm not invested in the same way, but I probably like my wife and I joke every once in a while about, Hey, we're going to watch the twilight movies. Like we should totally <laughs> watch the twilight movies. And, uh, you know, the fact that 50 shades of gray came out of essentially a fan fiction based on the twilight movies does not help its cause either for me. <laughs> no. uh, so I don't, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not like chomping at the bit to see them, but I'm sure I will at some point. Maybe, well, maybe, my, maybe my teenage daughter will want to see them someday and I'll have to watch with her. The soundtrack will get you through. I mean, you've got, you've got Death Cab, you've got the, uh, the, the Black Keys, you've got Muse, you know, a bunch of really good, a really good like alt-rock bands are, are the soundtrack basis for, for these. So there's, there's a ton of good stuff on, on the soundtracks. That's both very cool and very depressing. <laughs> 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 I wonder what they think about being on the soundtrack of those movies. Well, some of them actually created unique songs, like for the oh. movie. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the, in uh, back when they were a band, the Bravery, which was a really good band, the Bravery, mm. when they were around, they created a unique song. Um, I think even Death Cab did, if I'm not. Yeah, mistaken. I think they did. So yeah, Bra Bravery had a song on the. Uh, soundtrack to one of my favorite video games ever major league baseball 2003 mm. ea sports it's in the game man your mirrors on the front cover yeah <laughs> video games i have a strong music association with video games too yeah yeah it's yeah, definitely like uh body that? rock from moby as we we're talking about moby from uh, <laughs> i think it was fifa 2000 if yeah. i'm not mistaken the intro to fifa 2000 well, this is surprisingly actually not a uh, video game podcast or a soccer know, right? podcast. <laughs> <laughs> as much so, as we try to make it what it's not. <laughs> yeah. So if you have other bad movies that you would love to love to share with us, we'd love to hear about what your favorite bad movies are because we all have them. We all have the bad movies that we like. All right. So let's move on to our watch list. Uh, so, Rob, what did you watch this week? Uh, I've watched a few things. Uh, the first thing I'll mention is I watched Tarzan, uh, Disney, 1999. It came out. Um, oh, yeah. Is that the Brendan Fraser one? No, this is the animated one. Oh, the animated with, one. Uh, with Phil Collins on the soundtrack. Mm. And uh, I think that this is maybe the most overlooked, underrated movie of that kind of 90s to 2000s era. When you're talking about like uh, even going back to the late 80s, you're talking about like The Little Mermaid, uh, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, those movies. Um, this movie, in my opinion, stands right up with them, if not surpassing them in some ways. I think the visuals are just phenomenal. And like I said earlier, Phil Collins, uh, Phil Collins ran the soundtrack on this thing and wrote songs just for it. And um, if if you uh, have only seen it once or a couple of times, you might remember them like You'll Be In My Heart. Um, Son of Man is another one. Uh, there's just so much good music in this movie. And it's all Phil Collins. So uh, he was the perfect choice for it because it really sets the scene for the movie. And Tarzan, I think, is not an easy story to make a movie out of. And they did a really good job incorporating... Uh, the crazy cartoon animals alongside Tarzan and Jane uh, and the other human characters who show up. So I definitely, if you have not seen it, uh, highly recommend watching Tarzan, the 1999 Disney animated version of that movie. Also, George's the Jungle is really fun, but that's not the one I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I also watched, uh, I also watched, wedding crashers last night <laughs> oh nice <laughs> that might actually fall into the previous category of movies that are not great that are funny or fun to watch oh yes there's so much stuff that's uncomfortable in that movie <laughs> and inappropriate and uh my wife i think watched it for the first time last night and she was 
not pleased. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, if you've seen the movie, you'll get this. If you haven't, you won't, and your mind will be free because uh, it, you won't understand what it's coming from. But I, I leaned over to her and I said, I made you a painting. <laughs> <laughs> She slapped me like no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's Owen Wilson and Vince Swan together are are a pretty great team. I I have to say that I think the although very much memed and quoted, I don't think the Will Ferrell cameo is particularly good mm. <laughs> in this movie. Meatloaf, <laughs> but uh. <laughs> But it is still pretty funny. Um, and there is actually uh, some heart buried deep, deep in the mm. recesses of this movie. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't, I can't like with a clear conscience recommend that you watch it. But uh, yeah, I watched that the other night. So feel pity for me. No whining. Play like a champ. Yeah. Play like a champ. <laughs> <laughs> Rule four, don't walk away from another crasher. <laughs> In a funny jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, nah, you're, you're right, though. There is a little bit of heart in there. Like, I think that that one scene that really exemplifies it was when they keep um, Owen Wilson and Rachel McAdams, and they're sneaking back and forth and, like, almost going to knock on each other's door, and you got the Coldplay Sparks playing in the background. Oh, yeah. That's a good moment. I love I love that song. Yeah. And I love I love that that moment in the movie and it's kind of funny because watching the movie it's like this crazy like i said out of control thing and then there's that moment with that song and i'm like oh i like that song i like those guys this is cool <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unfortunately the things surround like the things immediately uh preceding and following uh that moment are uh, out of control to say the least <laughs> yeah. we're not going to go into detail <laughs> indeed <laughs> how about you what did you watch this week uh so i watched uh the girl with the dragon tattoo uh the version the american version that came out i think 2012 um with uh rooney mara and daniel craig and i love i love the series the girl with the dragon tattoo series i've read all the books multiple times um including the, the new there's three new ones that were written by uh, another author that the family hired to continue the series because mm. um, the original author, Stieg Larson, uh, died after writing the third one. Uh, so they've got a new guy, David Lagerkrans, writing new ones. And the books are really, really good. Uh, I've, I've seen the, uh, they've, the version, the Swedish version of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, uh, that trilogy is, has been on some one of the streaming services, Amazon or Netflix or one of them. But uh, the American version is really good. It's my favorite version of it. Um, this is not a movie for the faint of heart. There's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of graphic stuff in it. It is not a lighthearted story by any stretch of the imagination. Um, deals with a lot of the dark side of life and the dark side of crime. And there's not a lot of redeemable characters in it. But it's a fascinating, compelling story story about. Um, uh, trying to catch a serial killer and doing an investigation. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting nuance in it. I thought the characters were really really played well. Um, they lived up to their to their reputations in in print, and I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. It's directed by David Fincher, who's a fantastic director. Um, it even has one of the kind of Bond like intro video music things um where it's got the long the long intro sequence with the uh, um i think it's the immigrant song like cover of the immigrant song uh which is really powerful uh the the soundtrack was done by uh trent Reznor, who was really a fantastic composer of of nine inch nails fame uh is really really fantastic so uh i really like the movie have you seen it i have and i would say that uh, you you mentioned this, but just <clears throat> to amplify it a little bit, uh, I also read the book uh, before watching the movie, and I think that this might be one of the best adaptations I've seen of a book to a movie. Like there there are so many things in the movie where I 
I was like, oh yeah, I remember that moment like from the book. Like I think that uh, they they probably hit almost every important moment in the book and put it in the movie, which is not something that happens very often. Yeah. So I think it was just, I think it was exceedingly well done. Yeah, and I was disappointed that they didn't continue on with those characters um, going forward because the 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 newest one they created was not not super well done. So, um, it it really it was it had a lot of issues, but we don't have to go into that now. Uh, the second thing I watched this week was uh, the Born Legacy. I've been going through the I finished the Born original Born trilogy, and I wanted to get get this one in. Uh, so I watched the Born Legacy, and watching it again, I was just reminded of how good a movie this is. It was really really well done. When you, when you have a character that's kind of a side story to a main trilogy, it's very, very difficult to integrate that and do it well. And they did a fantastic job of integrating Jeremy Renner's character, Alex Cross, into the world of the Bourne movies. And so you get repeated cutbacks to where in the Bourne trilogy you are and how the events that took place in that trilogy are affecting this side world where Aaron Cross is. And so they create a branched off storyline which is directly connected and affected by the original trilogy, but stands on its own. And so it was really, really fascinating to watch how they did that and how expertly it fit in. Um, <clears throat> plus I thought Jeremy Renner did a fantastic job as, as an outcome agent and one who who kind of is on the fringe a little bit and uh it was really really cool and i i think the action was done well and and the storyline was compelling and fascinating and, and they did just uh, did such a good job integrating i want to see this character back I'm, I'm really hoping they revisit it at some point yeah this is one that i've only seen i think once so i need to see it again to really get a feel but uh watching it i did think it was well done i just uh i just haven't seen it multiple times so i would need to see it again i've seen the original trilogy a bunch of times so this is one i need to go back and check out again yeah all right so let's uh let's finish up today with uh what we're planning on watching this week so i'll go first on this one so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start in with the Jurassic Park series. It's been a long time, actually, since I've gone through and watched them all um, completely. And I've only seen the newer ones like once or twice, the Jurassic World movies. I've only seen them once or twice. So um, I'm looking forward to going back and looking through that series again. And um, so I'm going to do that. And there's a couple of new movies that came out on Hulu this month that I, that I really love. So one of them is the rhythm section, which I really enjoyed. And we've talked about on the podcast before. Uh, so since it's on Hulu, I feel compelled to watch it again. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to check out another of the Welcome to the Blumhouse movies from Amazon. Um, <clears throat> probably watch it by myself because my wife isn't super excited about it. <laughs> uh, I'll probably end up watching one or two things that uh she chooses to watch after making her watch wedding crashers that's only fair it's kind of <laughs> how we do things we go back and forth and uh it's my son walter's turn to pick the movie for family movie night this week so mm. i'll be watching something that a six-year-old wants to watch and yeah. who knows what that's gonna be yeah <laughs> <laughs> so probably something animated but i like a lot of animated stuff so it might turn out in my favor all right excellent well, that is going to be the show for today. Thank you for tuning into the Film for Fan podcast. Make sure you rate, subscribe, and tell your friends about it. Visit our YouTube channel and check out filmforfans.com. Uh, we have a lot of good stuff on there, including what you need to watch on Peacock and Disney Plus, which we put out last week. So our film recommendations are on that. So make sure you visit filmforfans.com. And until next time, enjoy the movies.